Okay, so this is for um, somewhat more uh, complex resistor circuits, and I'm still using the, the uh, series. Equivalent resistance is just the sum of the two, and the parallel is this guy, one of them times the other, divided by the sum of the two. So if I have two and three in parallel, it's 1.2 ohms, the equivalent resistance. So this is all we kind of knew from physics. What maybe we didn't know from physics is that um, we can simplify circuits. To start with, we're looking for resistors that are in air, so there will be no current passing through res this resistor. I am interested in the resistance between points A and B, and therefore this 20 is part of my circuit. But 10 is in air, 11 is ending up in air, 15 is in air, 17 is in air, 7 and 14. So this already gets rid of a ton of them. Now, I'm looking for resistors that are in parallel with shorts. To be in parallel, they have to share the two nodes. So you see this node on this side of the 18 is here, and the node on this side is, is B. Now, there's a short between the two. So this basically shorts out 18. And we'll have a short on 16 too, but I'll, I'll make it as if I didn't see. So we'll get there in a second. Now I'm interested in labeling notes like you did yesterday or the other day. Get out your uh, color pencils and let's get started. This is not a very interesting node. B is an interesting node. It has a lot of things around here. Oh, I forgot 19. Look at that. So 19 goes from node B to nothing, to nowhere. So I'm going to cut off 19. But now I have one node labeled so far. Actually, I have two, A and B. And now I'm going to start on node 1. I'm going to call this guy here. And you see this is jumping. This is a jumping wire, but I'm going to keep doing the green here. So this is all my green node that I'm going to call node 1. It goes all the way from here, however, it doesn't go to 9. So I can't get rid of 9 there. And now look, this here is my node 2. And this jumps over here, goes all the way. Look at this black node here. Here, here, here here, and now look at what happens to 16. So basically 16 is being shorted out by this node 2. And I'm going to cut it, so I don't need to worry about it. It's in parallel with a short. Finally, I'm going to only do one more node in here, I think node 3. This guy is my node 3. And now I want to redraw, this is my step three, I'm going to redraw that circuit. I'm going to redraw in black, and now node A and node B are my interesting nodes and, uh, because I want to measure from here to there. But then I have node three, node one, and node two. Node three, node one, and node two. This is all I need to draw. Now you're gonna, you may say here there's node 4, but this node 4 is very uninteresting. It's just a, uh, a series node, actually. I want to combine 2 and 6 and put here an 8 kilo ohm instead, really between nodes B and node 2. So watch. That 2 plus 6 is going to come here. And I don't need to worry about that node. And I got rid of 2 and 6 by putting this here. I am going to put a 1 kilo ohm between node 1 and B. So the green is node 1. I'm going to put 20 between A and 1. Maybe I'm going to move A a little bit closer here. 20 is A. And then I have 9 between node 1 and 3. I have 12 between 1 and 3. I have 13 between 1 and 2. No, 
So I have 8 between 2 and 3. Six, I got rid of five between B and no two. And I'm done with it. So I have to go through these resistors and either I have to have a check mark on them, that means I accounted for them there, or I have a them crossed out so they don't they are not part of the circuit. So now this circuit wait is 12 between 3 and 1. 3 and 1, yes. So now this circuit is much simpler to look at. And I see here that 8 is in parallel with 5. So hopefully one of my volunteers is going to make 8 times 5 divided, which is 40, divided by 8 plus 5, which is 13. Then hopefully another volunteer is going to do 12 times 9. It's 40 by 13. 12 times 9 divided by 21, which is going to be this two in parallel here. So the first one is 3.07, and I'm going to call that 3.1. We'll wait for the second one. The second one is 5.14. Awesome. 5.1 again. So these two between B and N2 is 5.1. Between A and N1 is 20. So I accounted for this guy. For oops, I made a mistake here. I think this is three, but I'll take a look. 20 is here, and now I want to do N3 to N1, and that is the 5.1 that I'm accounting for because they're in parallel. And now this in parallel is 3.1, it's between B and N2. This is 3.1, so I accounted for that. But now between N2 and N1, I don't have anything else to, to add other than that 13, and I'm accounting for that. And now between B and N1, I also have a 1 kilo ohm, and I'm accounting for that. And then N3 to N2, I have 8 kilo ohms, and I'm accounting for that. Now look, 5.1 kilo ohms in series with 8, because really there's no 3s there just to hold the 2 together. So they are in series. So in my next um, iteration of the circuit, I'm going to add these two, and that's going to give me 13.1, and this is going to be in parallel with 13. So really I'm going to do two steps in one here, because of space, 13.1 in parallel with 13 is more or less 6.5. So I'm going to copy again, A here is 20, and I, oh, let me change colors. So, A, A, 20, 20, and now watch, from node 1 to node 2, I'm going to call this a 6.5 kilo ohm. This is node 1, and this is node 2. Now, this is 3.1 kilo ohms, and now I still have a 1 kilo ohm here, and this is B. So now watch, 6.5 is in series with 3.1. So this will be reduced to 20. Oh, that's not good. 20 in series with 1 kilo ohm in parallel with 9.6. With And this is A, and this is B. So we're going to do 9.6 divided by 10.6, because these two are in parallel. 
and this is going to be more or less 0.9. Is that true? Yes, 0.9. So this is 0.9 plus 20. I'm going to call this 20.9 kilohms, more or less. And this is 10 minutes, a long circuit. But I hope you can see um, how to simplify a circuit with uh, 20 resistors.